Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. watching the debate but what the hell this is the ramble with alex and we go till midnight on the east coast of the united states ladies and gentlemen we go out to the west coast to talk to a, a man who has absolutely no technology <laughs> larry bubbles brown yes uh i need to uh still on dial up yeah yeah, I've got. I found a company here that provides uh, really good high-speed uh, internet service, but I have to go through the. Uh, have to contact the building owners because they have to put up an antenna on top of the roof. Oops. So they. So I don't think the building owner is probably going to go for that. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, but you, can't you just get normal, you know, service? AT and T said they can't. They said it wouldn't be. They could put me on a DSL, which would be not much faster no. because of the old wiring in the building here, which looks like it hasn't been changed since 1940. I don't know. Well, then maybe the phone company should come in and redo the wiring. That's what I was thinking, but I don't know if they want to spend that money. Well, it, 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 they don't want to spend that money, but the fact is that uh, they have to. You know, I'm sure. You know, I'm sure there are apartments the uh, the size of your your apartment house that have the old wiring, and they've gone in and done the new wiring so that everybody. They have to, right? I think they have to. I think there are rules and regulations and so on. You know, I don't. Yeah, I've it. seen I've seen the box down there in the basement where the wires come in. It's just uh, looks like Thomas Edison's. <laughs> so nobody in your entire apartment house has. Uh, the- there got to be. I've got to. I don't. I don't know any of the neighbors here, but they they must have internet in this building, don't you think? I, I would think so. I mean, how many people are there in the building? Twelve. Twelve. They they've got to be twelve people who are complaining they don't have internet service. Yeah. You know. Do you ever talk to your neighbors? No. No. Oh. <laughs> I you never see it. They're all like they're all like these new techies. They just kind of keep it themselves. Well, if they're new techies, then they want to have high speed internet, right? Well, they're probably all doing it on their phone. I don't know. I, I, I'll tell you. Call. Uh, when's the last time you talked to AT and T or whoever the phone company is? About a month ago. Huh. I would call them again and say, Hey, you know, there are a lot of techies living in this building. I'm sure they've got some kind of internet. Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. Oh, it's horrible. It's just a uh, dial-up is just... Uh, yeah. Or it's torture. Well, of course it's torture. You know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, and they should want to put it in there. They can get more money for it. You know, I mean, all kinds of things. It's ridiculous. So. See, I'm at the one end of the spectrum, then you were, like, on the uh, other end. You had, uh, you were the first person I knew that had an email account. Oh, really? Yeah. That was a, a, a well, that was a, a Bennett, I think, at Hook.net. Hook.net, yeah, who were they? That was a company called Hook, and Hook. I got to know them, and, in fact, they became a sponsor at one point. And uh, I, uh, they, they were like one of the first that actually had that, where you could get yourself an email and so on and so forth. So, you know, I remember. Yeah, I remember you were, you kept saying about Hook dot net. I had no idea what you were talking. I didn't know what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so but, what happened to them? They get bought up. Oh, they 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 died early on. You know, I mean, because they were like one of the first ones to do it. So they're the smart guys on the block, right? You know, they're the hip new people. And then all of a sudden the phone companies decide, well, this is a good idea. You know, so then they get pushed out by the bigger companies. That's what happened. I think what happened to them. I'm surprised I remember their name. (laughs) Hook.net. Yeah. 
And you did have people that were emailing you at the time. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, I remember the radio station was so mad at me because I was doing all this technology. I would bring a computer into the into the studio, something had never been seen before. And they said, "Don't don't bring that computer in. You're spending all your time looking at it." You know. And I went, "Get with the program." You know this. You and today, I mean, you go into a uh, into a studio, into a radio studio, and there are dozens of computers in the studio. The yeah, station, I remember they were mad about that. <laughs> yeah, they they you can't operate without it. You know. So, but th- that was let's face it, that was a ninth in the nineteen nineties, uh, right? Nineteen eighties. That I was doing. Early, early 90s. Yeah. And when I think about it, that's a long time ago. You know, that's like, what, 40 years, something like that? Almost 30. Almost 30. Well, if you if you make it the 1990s, it's it's 30. But if, yeah, well, uh, yeah no, it, it's maybe 40, 40 years, maybe 30, at least 35 years when I tried to bring a computer into the studio. Uh, so when I talk about it as being then and now, I mean, really, that was a long time ago. So. so where will you see computers being 10 years from now? Oh, I I, I see computers not being... It, 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 everything practically that you can do on a computer, you can do on an iPad and on an iPhone or on a phone, okay? You don't really need a physical computer. Right. You know, so you can do... A, I mean, I couldn't do this show without using a standalone desktop computer because the one I have has all kinds of giant power to it, you know, and is able to do a lot of things. But for normal people, I mean, all you need is your iPad, really. All you need is your iPhone. All those things will do all the things most computers will do, and they're probably almost just as powerful now. Now they've added to it uh, what... uh, uh, 5K or whatever they call it, uh, which is the new speed for uh, uh, over the over the air uh, transmission, and it's it's so speedy that it's I mean 20 times the speed of the uh, of the service you have now just through your phone company, the regular service. So. Mm-hmm. You know, where's it going? It's just, you know, there'll be a day you'll have a chip implanted in your head. I don't know, you know, and it'll do that could, everything. That, that doesn't sound too far off. It D- doesn't sound, well, it, it is far off, but it's not that far off because I think of um, the days when I said, well, it's going to be far off before we really get what we have today. And if you think about it, it, it is far off. I mean, we talked about 35 years, you know. That's a lot of time in technology because technology every, what do they say, every year it like doubles its power, you know. At least, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you, you matriculate that over a period of 35 years and you can see how far we've come. So. I rest my case. <laughs> I rest my case. And the, and the big tech companies will control us all. Well, the big tech companies will control us all. Yeah, they already are. You know, I mean, uh, we're getting to the point now where they're thinking about breaking a lot of them up, okay? They want uh, Google to, like, break up uh, some of its services, like sell off YouTube to somebody else, you know. They should. Be- because they consider them a monopoly. Well, I, I don't know. You know, I, I'm mixed about this. Because we're talking about technology here. We're not talking about uh, gas stations, all right? Uh, you know, when they took standard oil and, you know, said you can't be standard oil anymore, or whatever. Because what happens is they started a business from the ground up. They invented the technology. And now they're reaping the benefits of it. And they run it very well. I mean, I can't complain about Google. Okay, I use YouTube for this program, and I, I've had little or no trouble with it. I have some complaints with the way they operate it and what I have to, you know, put up with. But uh, on the whole, and that's just because I'm a complainer, 
uh, on the whole, it's it's pretty well run. So what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to like sit here and go, oh, woe is me, Google's screwing me. What? I'm getting everything for free. I'm not paying to, you know, uh, put my signal out on the internet, that my video signal, and pay for it. There are a lot of places I can go and pay for it, but I'm not going to get as good service as I'm getting out of YouTube. Oh, well, they, you know, they they uh, they compromise your, your privacy and so on. Fuck that. I'm willing to give a little bit of my privacy for free. You know. Well, I don't know. I don't like the way they just rape your privacy. It's just... Well, are they raping their, your privacy, or are you allowing them to rape your privacy? I mean, they're, they're, when you see a company and they're offering you something for free, like Facebook, for instance, you've got to expect that there's some kind of payment you've got to make, and that payment is your information. Not your private information necessarily, but information about you, about your buying habits and where you surf to and so on and so forth. And quite frankly, you know, it's like like you've said, the, the main joke in your act. You're opening joke every time. <laughs> it, well, t- say it so they can hear someone, it. Out of, someone stole my identity. Now his life sucks. Yeah, exactly. So do you care if somebody steals your identity? Well, the fact they're making money off it means it's not. We're not getting this. For yeah, free, but but so. but well, but you're what you're doing is the currency that you're paying for it in is information about you. And it's not it's not information like, you know, um, um, how many times a day do you masturbate or anything like that, you know. It's basically like where do you shop, what are your tastes, what do you like. I'll give you a good example, okay. I went on uh, YouTube the other day, a couple of weeks ago, and I started looking for everything about uh, insurance, you know, for health insurance because we're being – bumped out of our program at SAG after and I I've got to go find a plan to to replace it. And I I go and I start watching a lot of YouTube videos to try and understand the lay of the land like, you know, what what it means when you get this kind of advantage or you get supplemental and blah 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 blah. I'm watching all these videos. Now, every time I go to a video on YouTube, what do I get an ad for? <laughs> right? Now, yeah. I, I could argue about that, and I could yell and scream about that, but that's how they make their money. You know, otherwise, if I had to pay for their service, for instance, I use YouTube to put this program out every night. If I wanted to go to a service to do it live, I would have to pay $75 a month. I'm paying zero. Okay? So it's $75 a month versus zero. I'm taking, I'm taking the zero. And the service is just as good, if not better, than the one for $75. And nobody knows that company, so they won't know to go over there. But if they're out surfing YouTube, they might see, you know, Alex Bennett's ramble come up, and they'll watch it. So what? what's the trade-off here? I mean, this company has provided me with a very decent service, and I'm not paying for it in in the general sense. But information about me is the currency I'm paying with. And I don't mind that. Do you? I guess. I, I, kind of, I don't like the fact that uh, they tend to be censoring a lot. I, I don't think they censor. What I've found they do is they... Uh, uh, if if you don't live up to certain standards, in other words, there's some sexual content in your in your video or whatever, they will demonetize you or at least limit your monetization if you're making money off the uh, off the thing. Because I make money off it. Uh, I just got uh, 103 dollars put in my account by YouTube, <laughs> right? Uh, but they demonetize me a lot because if I say the word fuck. Too much that may have just demonetized me. Okay, wow. but they have a right to do that because they're selling that space to advertisers, and they have to guarantee the advertisers they're not going to be in an atmosphere that is, uh, so, shall we say, questionable. Now that doesn't mean I don't still get ads. I just don't get certain kinds of ads. So. 
I, I don't know that they're sense. I, I don't feel they're censoring that much. I find Facebook more of a problem. Uh, you know, if I were to play some song right now, uh, they would immediately blank me out if I was doing it live. Yeah, Facebook seems to be the worst. Yeah. Uh, YouTube will tell me, well, you know, you used music, which is in copyright, and the copyright owner has the right to run their own ads on your site rather than you on your pay, on your video. Uh, so anyway, it, it, yeah, it's, it's weird. Anyway, hey, we've run out of time. Oh, geez. and we've that been talking quick. about technology with Larry Bubbles Brown. That's amazing. <laughs> See you next. You're week. educating me. See you next week, Larry. You got it. Bye bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Bow, yeah. There's Larry Bubbles Brown once again, ladies and gentlemen, on our fine program. Uh, and it's time for you to call. If you want to figure out how to call, just go to gabnet.net. On the right-hand side of the page, there's a column. In the middle of that column, it says uh, Zoom us on our program. It says Zoom. Just click on that. And it will immediately send you here, and then we'll put you on the program. Okay? Just, it's that simple. I mean, it's that easy. All right? Um also, tonight, I guess uh, there's something to talk about. Uh, if you all watched the debate, I watched it up until about the last 15 minutes, and I had to come in here and get this show going. I was going to play something. Uh, I'll give you a little hint of what it is, what it was, but I decided not to, and I'll tell you why. Here, let me see here. Um, Where is it? Where is that? Go to, go to this. All right? R roll tape. Are you ready for some tough questions? You're going to be fair. Are you just, I'm going to be fair. Just be fair. But last time I remember you saying to me, bring it on, bring it on. No, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for fairness. That's all. You're going to get fairness. But you're okay with some tough questions. No, I'm not. You're not okay with tough questions. Well, I'm going to be fair. You, you don't ask Biden tough questions. Me? Huh? I don't agree with you. Terrible. I, I it's terrible. It's terrible. You. <laughs> you know that. Okay, are you, you ready? ready? Everybody ready? We're out. Okay. Can I start? One second. Close the, the door. Are you okay? You're good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. So we have the pandemic. All right. So Three anyway, that, then they go into the interview. I watched the whole thing. It's about 38 minutes long. Trump put it up on, um, on his uh, Facebook page. Uh, and uh, that is a camera that was set up independent of CBS's when they were doing the 60 Minutes interview. Uh, and they say he walked out on the interview. He, it's not like he walked out on the interview, like, I can't take this anymore, I'm leaving. It's more if I, if I were to go to the very end of it. Uh, let me see if I can, if I can somehow, uh, well, I can't do it. I can't do it now. Uh, let me see here. Could I, could I do it? Could I bring up to, towards the end of the interview? Is that possible? I don't think so, no, no. Okay, well, I, what I want to do, what happens at the end is he goes, how much time do we have left? And I said, five minutes. And he said, ah, let's just stop it now. And basically, that's what he said. He could have, he could have kept going, but it wasn't like he absolutely just, goodbye, I'll see you later, guys. You know, uh, I, I'm not going to uh, uh, deal with this any longer. It wasn't that kind of thing. But uh, the, it, I decided not to play it because, basically, if you just saw the uh, debate, you heard all the same talking points over and over and over and over. Well, well, let, well I don't want to hog the fun on this whole deal. Let me admit two people who are waiting to get on our panel here, and then we can, uh, we can go to them. There's... Uh, uh, Charlie Wallace is uh, should be joining us any second. There's Robert Natali. Hello, Robert. How are you, Alex? Yes, I suppose you saw the debate, right? I, I did. Well, yeah, unenthusiastically, yes. Unenthusiastically. Why? Why do you say unenthusiastic? Because it's not a debate. It's not a debate. I don't really need to say. I don't. Too much I don't. More than I that. don't know that we need debates. Do you? No. Honestly, I think that the. Uh, I think that, you know, the, the, the meal is already in the oven nationwide. Frankly, 
I think this satisfies our nation's need for events. You know, I think our nation loves Super Bowls and Oscar parties and who's going to win and who's going to lose and all that shit and makes this into something of a circus. And then we complain that it becomes something of a circus. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, I, I watch only to, you know, to have a sense of what happened. My, my thing is, if I were Joe Biden's people, I would have described this as the 15th round of a championship fight where Biden is way ahead on points. Don't trade punches with the guy, you know, just stick and jab mm-hmm. and try your best not to get hit. Right. Because if you just survive this round, you'll win. Did he survive the round? I think he did. I think he stumbled here and there. I think Trump is good at this format because he just obliterates the moderator and makes it into, you know, his own personal thing. Yeah. But my question is, do you think there's do you think there'll be any change in the in the no. stats in the polls because of nope. this? Yeah. Not not, I, one, I, I, not I, one iota. The only weakness I saw in Biden, okay. And, and this has nothing to do with being president, okay, was that when he was a kid, he had a stutter. And he really yep. hasn't totally lost the stutter. Right. And so it's still there, and you kind of, kind of kind of plays itself as a weakness, which it really shouldn't, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, if, if some guy stuttered his way through the presidency and uh, nothing changed in the United States, I'd say, good, I'm glad he stuttered, you know. Um, but it, it, it was it was a uh, uh, I just I, I, I don't want to see this hurting Biden. I don't think Biden did anything that would hurt himself. Uh, I, I think he could have defended himself just a little bit better. I think he could have uh, parsed things in a certain way, like when it came to, oh, your son made 80 trillion quadrillion the, the, the amount of all these changes in in the Ukraine. Um, And that whole fact that Trump uh, never paid taxes over here, basically, and then he had a bank account in China, which I think he probably still has, or somebody in the family still has. I know uh, Ivanka probably does because she sells her products in China. And China wants some of that money to stay there. Sure. Okay, so his family has investments over there. I mean, this is a guy who's never been transparent about his wealth or about his, you know, he doesn't want anybody to know how poor he is, okay? Let's <laughs> face it. If we knew how poor he was, we'd be worried about the security of this country because there are some of the, we would, we would like to know how much money do you have, how much money do you owe, and of that money that you owe, who do you owe it to, okay? Then we can tell whether the guy is compromised at all by, uh, by this. Uh, but I don't think we're we're at that point. You know, I mean, he see, just never has has done it. So see, I could do the same technique that Trump does. I could do it with you right now, Alex. You mm-hmm. and I could have a conversation, and in the middle of the conversation, I could say, Alex, you know, it came out just <laughs> earlier. I, I, you know, I don't know who said it, but I'm hearing about this woman in New Rochelle yeah. that you were involved with. Right now, right. You now have to spend the next five minutes denying something that I made up out of whole cloth. And as a result, you never really get to speak to your policies or the deficiencies of what it is that my argument is. I just throw shit at the wall and now you're on the defensive. Well, He's also, very good uh, at that. also, I mean, with, with Trump, it's never a discussion about, well, if you're president for another four years, what are you going to do? And then have him answer that question. Okay, Uh, Mm -hmm. you could have done that in any other debate. I mean, if it were Bush versus uh, uh, whoever, or if it were Obama versus Romney, I mean, they would both answer that question. And it wouldn't be like uh, all of a sudden all kinds of chicanery trying not to answer the question. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, you know, what you're right about is I find the debate format kind of stupid. OK, it does. Who, whoever wins a debate doesn't necessarily become the best president. No, you know, um, 
And so I, I wonder about that, you know, and I wonder about why we, you know, you were saying we like that kind of competition thing. Every year with the Oscars, we have a competition mm -hmm. for what is the best piece of art. Yeah, how do you do that <laughs> you anyway? Know? I mean, you know, how do you uh, compare that? Yeah. Uh, which is the best movie? Well, we got a comedy here. We got yeah. a science fiction picture. We've got a musical. Uh, which is the best picture? You but know. we have, as a nation, we have this this need for events, and we have this need to measure things in terms of number one. Well, who? So how do you compare Joe yeah. Joe Rabbit to a goddamn animated film? You know, I don't understand how you do well, that. Well, uh, my question would be: Who in the world uh, are we talking about here? I mean, uh, uh, what what are we talking about? As the as the uh, I, I don't know. I just I don't agree with the the whole concept of these these uh, events, as it were. But you know why we have these events? Uh, the reason we have these events is because, very simply, uh, uh, the American it's public funny. doesn't want. Well, the, the, it's it's the uh, it's the news operations that are ginning the thing up. Yeah. You know, and then you listen to them talk about it before it happens and you're going, geez, you know, they're they're they're, they're acting like this is some kind of like like, uh, you know, Olymp like like before a, a football game. And they're all yeah. sitting around saying, well, if so and so does such and such a defense and blah, blah, blah that's exactly what you're hearing the day before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you, you're hearing the pregame show. Mm -hmm. And and when they at the beginning of the night when we tuned over there it was about five minutes before the hour, uh, mm -hmm. there was um, what's her name uh, on MSNBC I can't remember her name now the lesbian Maddow. Rachel uh, Rachel Maddow, Rachel Maddow. Uh, and I looked at Marjorie and I said oh it's the red carpet you know I mean it's it's the red carpet show I mean we don't have any people showing up and saying who are you wearing but you know close close you know. Yep. I don't know. I mean, if you compare MSNBC's analysis to Fox's, it's you can tell that they're Fox is targeting a, a much lower IQ level of people than what well, MSNBC. Well, is. well, they have they have an audience. They're going yeah. after a certain audience, and they they <coughs> they get that audience, yeah. and they have to play to that audience. Uh, that doesn't yeah. you know that doesn't mean that they're. Uh, going to be uh, that they're right, you know. It's just that they're playing to that audience. And look, MSNBC is playing to their audience. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I always the thing I don't like about MSNBC, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, and I'll say it till I'm blue in the <laughs> face. And that is the thing I don't like about about MSNBC is that they're just trying to make me happy. You know, they're trying to tell me everything I want to hear. Well, tell me some stuff I don't know. Tell me some stuff that makes me think. Don't tell me something that simply, you know, s strokes me. And it makes me see, feel better about my, my misbegotten feelings about things. See, we're all of a certain age, more or less. Mm -hmm. And back, back when we were kids, you, you turned on the news. You turned on Walter Cronkite. And Walter Cronkite, you know, among others, Huntley Brinkley, Mm -hmm. And what they did was they reported the news, and that's what you heard. And then you made the best of that information as you chose. Yeah. The proliferation of cable television and satellite television allows for news that you want to hear in the manner mm -hmm. in which you want to hear it. Journalistic ethics are now out the window. Anybody with a goddamn cell phone is now a reporter, mm -hmm. and they're not, they're not beholden to any journalistic ethics whatsoever. So in effect, what it's done is it's created this sense of hyper-partisanship where the people, I tuned in to Fox when the debate was over just to get a sense of what they were saying, but in the end, they're not going to convince me. And the people that are watching Fox have already pulled the lever in their mind for Trump anyway. Mm -hmm. The people who are watching MSNBC know which way they're going to vote anyway. Right. So, you know, it's all it's all a money making machine for those two individual news outlets. It, it, mm -hmm. it isn't moving the needle. Right. Right. So, uh, well, you know, uh, uh, here on this program, we used to have a guy called the show who uh, was very much to the right and would always bespeak Trump's 
cause in case, okay? Uh, he doesn't call the program anymore, not because I've told him not to, but because he chooses not to. Um, but the, the point is that uh, I liked having him here because he did speak that other voice. The thing I don't miss mm -hmm. is that he was so interruptive that he made it impossible for other people to get their point across. And that's why uh, uh, he would only be allowed back on this program if he was a little less rude to the rest of the panel, okay? But I like that other voice being there because I think it's important. No, I disagree with him entirely. But I think that his voice was important because it made us at least justify what we felt about things and question some of the feelings we had. Now, I used to get letters from people constantly going, that, kick that guy off the show. I won't listen to you unless you get rid of him. And I was very stubborn about keeping him on for exactly the reason I'm talking about, yeah. you know, that I, I don't think that... Uh, I, I was going to take him off because he, you know, didn't didn't fit in, as it were. Uh, and people, but what I got were people who didn't want to hear on this program anything that was opposed to what they thought. And that that was the reason why I was so stubborn about keeping him on, because you should hear him. He should be a voice. He should be here. What what happened eventually was he just became uncontrollable. As, as, a, as a participant and made it rough on the show itself and on the participation of all of you and getting your word in edgewise. And that's why when he went, I made no attempt to say, oh, please stay, you know. Uh, but that was the reason I got rid of him wasn't be, because of all those people that wrote in saying, you got to keep him off. I still, when I, I talk about him, like right now, um, I'll get a letter from somebody saying, oh, you're just opening the door for him to come back. Don't let that happen. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, he's, that, that's not why he's not here, you know. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, what do, what, do we, what do we do, you know? I mean, uh, 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 but that's what we do. We, we live in an age mm -hmm. where people are, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, you, you got to hear, you, you know, they want you to, they want to hear what they want to hear. And it's, it's, it's kind of, I don't know. Yeah. There's something wrong with it. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, Jeff. Yeah, in my little perspective, I, I think the biggest problem with Huzz mm -hmm. was that he would often use what I call Fox information that was totally lying stuff, bad information, and he had no way of, of uh, proving it to be right or wrong. Well, and, and, that, 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 that I don't think is what bothered me as much uh, as, as the fact that he just, uh, he was rude to other people. In yeah. other words, he was disruptive to everybody getting a feeling they could get their two cents worth in. And that, that's the problem. Uh, yes, uh, but anyway, what I was saying well, is maybe what, I have what, a what, what bothered me, what bothered me about it was that the audience reaction was we don't want to hear him we don't want to hear him get him off the air because we don't agree with what he's saying and and that's what i hated about when i was on serious left on uh, serious uh what bothered me about that was i used to get a lot of complaints from people because i wasn't 100 percent for obama i mean i felt that he had uh, questionable qualities as a president especially during his first term and i think the thing that eventually probably got me thrown off serious uh, was the fact that I was critical of Obama. And I, and I was critical of, of liberals. I said I didn't like liberals particularly because liberals can't be trusted. They're, as Phil Oaks once said, they're 10 degrees to the left in good times and 10 degrees to the right when it affects them personally. I don't think you can trust a liberal. Um, uh, so I, I never liked that. And then people called them progressives. That one really drove me nuts, you know. So because I had that feeling and I had that openness about how I felt about things and that if you're going to be, I said, don't call yourself a liberal. Don't call yourself a progressive. Say you're a leftist. You know, have some balls. Call yourself a leftist. That just didn't play well. And who's that guy with a lot of money who gives money to the Democratic Party? Uh, what's his name? Soros. 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 Yeah. Soros, I think, had something to do with me getting kicked off. 
<laughs> because the guy that replaced me was in Soros's pocket. Okay. Uh, and I think Soros was just not happy with uh, what I was doing. And then I think Sirius heard from Soros about it and uh, uh, didn't want to get on Soros's bad side. So I was out the door and nobody would ever tell me why I was being let go. So that's why I suspect that to be true. And if it's true, great. I take that as a badge of courage because I consider Soros an asshole too. You know. They they should have given you credit for being president of Antifa. Yeah, I know. I was, <laughs> they, well, I, they, they, I think maybe that was the reason they eventually got rid of me. You know, uh, but uh, shady character. Yeah, shady <laughs> character that I am. Uh, but uh, so, uh, did you feel that Trump improved his chances tonight at all? No. He didn't do anything new. No, he just no. continues to lie. You yeah. Know. Yeah. Well, what I I I think uh, Biden was not, is not he's not cutthroat enough, you know. He he should just yeah, when you, you, you know when when uh, when Trump starts bringing up all this bullshit about the laptop and Giuliani's crap, Biden should just step right up and say, "This is bullshit. It's it's Russian propaganda, and and you know it is, you know. I mean, you know, all all the major media has has." No, none of them has touched it. The the guy that put that won't even put his name on the articles in the New York Post. Okay, but let's face it, uh, Biden had a deficit tonight, and that deficit was he's ahead. Okay, yeah. and so you don't want to do anything to blow that. So if he went out and just attacked Trump and attacked all his uh, this and all his that mm. and and whatever, he basically the only thing he he had to do was defend his family. Uh, yeah. But to go after Trump, that would have just eh, could have turned off some people. You know, could have turned There's off some no people. Need. You don't want to lose anybody. You want to gain no. people. And Just the, don't the get times hit. when he played it best is when he looked directly in the camera and spoke to the person at home and said, you know how difficult it is for you to buy a new pair of tires and blah, 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 blah. Then he, I think, really worked because <clears throat> what Joe has going for him is he's a real Joe. You know, mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's got the common man touch. And I think he understands, you know, uh, I think you mentioned it last night, Robert, that, you know, somebody who's had pain in his life yes, uh, uh, comes to something with a different approach. Yes. Right. And he's had so I much. I believe that. Yeah. When's Trump ever had any real pain in his life? You know, his brother died, but he didn't really like his brother. He didn't give a shit. Yeah, he, he didn't give a shit. Didn't you know? care. Huh? Yeah. He paid his family care. out of money, too. I mean, yeah, but I mean, you don't, yeah. you don't think about uh, uh about him as, as as having that kind of you know they it, wow. it, biden went through some terrible stuff i mean you got your wife and a kid killed in a car crash oh. and you have another one die of brain cancer uh who was the hero of the family the guy who yep. you know went to yep. went to the mid-east and fought wars and so on <clears throat> you know and the only thing you can go after is the one kid in the family who had a drug problem well I don't know how many families you know, but I know a lot of families, and I think if I said yeah. each one of them, do you know anybody or have anybody in your family who has had a drug problem, they'd all raise their hands. Mm -hmm. So Trump doesn't even know who the American public is. Yeah. You know? And that's his, a, that's his deficit. I have a friend in Texas who uses an expression which I always think of with Trump. Maybe Charlie's been in Texas a while. Maybe he knows the expression my friend always says about trump all hat no cattle yeah. <laughs> all hat, no cattle. um i mean i uh you know i wish i could sit here and say oh trump did good on this and he did good on that i just i just dislike him so much i can't even look at him with any kind of kindness in my heart you know yeah. um uh, but i'm well, he just uh, blatantly he, lies in his ads Oh, the the ads are amazing. Mm -hmm. The ones with Biden, where he, he says, where Biden says, "I'm going to raise taxes," but he they cuts don't, them they, off in mid. Wait a minute, but they don't right. they don't finish the sentence, which was right. on everybody over four hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. So uh, and and then he uses Fauci in his ads. You know. I mean. So yeah. yes, Jeff. Uh, did anybody notice that they never really stopped him from talking? 
No, I agree. I thought that was part of the deal. I agree. Well, they did cut them off on, at some point. I never heard of well, it. Well, effectively. One point where they said two minutes, and at the two minutes, you heard the mic turn off. And, try, and he, I guess he could kind of hear it because he couldn't hear his voice in the room, and he stopped. Uh, but they didn't. By the way, what, how do you think Kristen Welker did? Pretty good. I thought she was terrific. Yeah. But then again, I'm in love with her. Yeah, yeah. That, you, you have a bias. Yeah, yeah. But wouldn't you agree with me? Is that not one of the loveliest women in news? She's also a good reporter. She's a great reporter. She's a smart yeah. lady. Yep. But man, she is just, I look at her and I just go, oh, God, I wish I were young again. Oh, <laughs> you know. But then again, just like anybody of her sort, she wouldn't have wanted me anyway. So, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but, I mean, she is so, uh, so attractive. And so smart and has such poise. And I think she did a good job tonight. I think what she was trying to do was stay out of the way as much as possible and not get into any dust up with Trump or dust up with Biden. And, you know, you're in a combustible room. So, you know, you, you, have, a ten, you have a chance at making the place kind of blow up, right? And who wants that? Um, I so, think she got bullied too often, frankly. I think yeah. there were too many times where she attempted to stop Trump and Trump just like talked right over her, just yeah. steamrolled he, her. He never, he never backed off. No. All. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't the uh, train wreck that the first debate was. No. Uh, but I think that's because, number one, uh, Biden wanted to stay away from getting into that give and take. And uh, and having to call him any names, and I think he wanted to seem like he was being a little better, you know, not enough, but a little better. I saw this. Anybody see the interview with uh, with uh, Trump with uh, uh, Leslie Stahl? Because I'm looking forward to yes. seeing it on Sunday and seeing how it got edited. What? I've seen pieces. Yeah, I yes. have the whole thing here. I was going to play it tonight, and then I figured. You know, everything, he's, everything he says in the interview, for the most part, is the mm -hmm. same thing he was saying on stage tonight. Yeah, same yeah. old shit. Yeah, and the same way of answering questions, you know, being asked a question and answering another one. Yeah. That, that kind of thing. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, I felt that the idea that uh, uh, he was being treated unfairly by Leslie Stahl just wasn't true. See, Trump <laughs> takes... So ridiculous. Well, Trump looks upon an inter uh, the press if they interview him and ask him a tough question okay which is, that's the job of a reporter it, it would be my job if uh, if anybody were here to ask them some tough questions if they were politicians mm -hmm. uh, but if anybody asks him a tough question they're being unfair well no, mm -hmm. Leslie Stahl wasn't being unfair she was asking him about all the questions that people have been asking him lately. Yeah. You know, and at one point he says, uh, he says, I've had the best economy uh, that anybody's ever had in the history of the United States, whatever. And she just simply said, Donald, you know that's not true. Right. <laughs> yeah. She sounded like she was motherly, right? Like, <laughs> like come on, little boy. You, yeah, you know, know that's that you not, stole the candy. You, you know that's not true. Yeah, and he goes. Oh, it is. It absolutely is. The part I love tonight, and I, I thought about this for a second when he came up with his, I've done more things for blacks no. than oh, anybody God, since does. Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, give me a break. Uh, number one, Abraham Lincoln really only did one thing yeah. for the blacks. Okay, only one thing. On the other hand, what president did about ten things? Yeah. Johnson. Lyndon Johnson. Uh, Lyndon Lyndon Johnson. Johnson. Yep. Lyndon yep. Johnson. He hasn't done more for blacks than Lyndon Johnson. No. Listen, he hasn't done more for blacks than the KKK. Right. <laughs> yeah. <You know. laughs> and by the way, since Lyndon Johnson, he knew at the time he did it, he was told, you're going to lose the South to the Democratic Party for a generation. Mm -hmm. And, he, yeah. and in fact, that's proven to be more than true. Very true. Yeah. They be, they be, yeah. The Dixiecrats, as they were yes. once called, all became Republicans. Yeah, Richard Russell, 
people of that sort. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, you know, it it uh, he it, the a guy who did more than Abraham since Abraham Lincoln. Well, no, I can I can I can tell you right now that uh, that uh, uh, Lyndon Johnson absolutely did more than than Abraham Lincoln ever did. Uh, and uh, if I had to add some other people, I think uh, Roosevelt did a lot for equality and for helping the races. He wasn't, you know, he didn't do some of the landmark decisions and stuff, but he was in there, you know, doing his 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 uh, his part. Um, and Truman integrated the military. Truman yes, integrated did. the military. That's right. Well, but you got to give it to Abraham Lincoln. He did end slavery and kept the country together. <laughs> you got to give him that. But yeah, but I'm saying that you know when you say he did more for the uh, for the uh, well, you know well taking people out of slavery uh, that's that's a pretty big thing. I mean a, you know that's a, that yeah absolutely. But I mean it comes down to you can vote, but you're still going to be a slave. I'd say, okay, I don't want to be a slave, and I don't yeah. need to vote. Yeah. Of course, it, you know, there's a good question you can ask, though. Was Lincoln against slavery because he felt it was an inhumane thing to do, or was he against slavery because he wanted to create economic sanctions against the South? I think the former. What, that he wanted economic sanctions against? I think in his heart of hearts, I think a lot of presidents in their heart of hearts knew that slavery was wrong, mm -hmm. but they also knew that politically it was a quagmire. They also knew that politically it was not safe territory. Look, John F. Kennedy, um, back in the days where they were in, trying to integrate the Southern universities, John F. Kennedy knew that on in, in, in all in all cases that these things were wrong, but he also knew that it was a quagmire politically. And so political motivation and what your heart tells you are often two separate things, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. You know what I would have did, Alex, when he kept mentioning he did so much for the black? Yeah. Biden should have just said, you did more uh, for the colored than Kennedy and, I, and uh, LBJ. I mean, he should have put him right on the spot there. Because that's like almost like just missing on that legacy, the whole civil rights movement. Well, LBJ passed more civil, more uh, uh, legislation for blacks, and, and he should have just brought that up and just hammered than, it right than up. any president in history. Well, yeah, Biden should have brought that up, but he. I didn't. was saying on the couch, why doesn't he just bring it up and, and just end mm -hmm. it? Make him look stupid. Well, look, uh, I like Joe. I've gotten to like Joe much more lately than I did when he started running. You know, um, I, I question whether he could go the course and do a good job, but he has. He's doing a, he's doing a good job of running for president. Uh, I think he's looking a little exhausted right now, a little tired. I would be too. This has been going on for how long? Two years? Too long. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the, the whole season should only be like eight months, nine months, and that's it, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, but I've gotten to I've gotten to kind of like Joe, and I I feel that he would be an okay president. I don't think he'd be the greatest president ever, but he'd be a, a damn he'd be a good president. He keep his stewardship over the country would be solid. Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, John. Wouldn't him. if he if he does get elected, I, he won't have to worry about you know running again because I don't think he's going to run again. So at least he'll be able to concentrate on four years of being president. Well, yeah. you know, he, he, the trouble with Trump was he started running for his second term the first day he was oh, in yeah. office. Yeah. Yeah. And they so, after the inauguration. Yeah. And really, you shouldn't do that till it's about the the year before. You know, uh, I don't I don't think Obama was worrying about his second term <laughs> one day after his first term started. You know, uh, yeah. and and I think if you if you strap that around yourself. You really strap yourself with a big problem, you know, uh, and, a, and a bad mindset, as it were. Have you heard the latest about Rudy Giuliani? Oh, I, can't. I follow him on Twitter. I hope he goes down. Well, Alex, Trump has to have the goods on him. Why is he so in bed with him? Well, uh, uh, to begin with, uh, uh, let's be honest. Um, uh, Rudy Giuliani's a crook, plain yeah. and simple. Yeah. No question yeah. about it. 
Yeah. Uh, I, and I know it from people that know it. Okay. So that's how I know it. Uh, he, uh, uh, but he, the latest thing is there's a movie coming out. Gee, in just a couple of hours. I can't wait to see on it. On Netflix. <laughs> May watch. With, yeah. with the newest Borat film. Now, because he did Borat the first time, it's kind of hard for him to go places and put people on as Borat because they know who he, who Borat is. They know that it's Sasha Baron Cohen and he's doing put-ons and he's going to embarrass you. Okay? They didn't know that for the first film. So in this film, he hired a woman to play his Borat sister, and they're going out together. So that when he wants somebody to go in and do something where they don't want anybody to know who's doing it, okay, and pull it off, they use her, okay? So supposedly in this one segment in the film, she invites uh, Rudy Giuliani up to her hotel room to do an interview. And he's got the microphone on and everything, and they do the interview. And then they're through. This is all on film. Mm -hmm. And then he's through with the interview, and he takes off the mic, and then he sits down, gets out of the chair, supposedly, and lies down on the bed, puts his hand in his pants, and starts playing with himself. This is going to be on television tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it going to go viral, do you think? Viral? It doesn't have to go viral. It's on That's Netflix. It. I want everybody to see it, though. <laughs> there He's were already denying the whole thing. What? what? He's already denying the whole thing and saying... You think Rudy circumcised? Out. We may find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know he has seeds in his prostate, and they were put there by the same doctor who did me. You know. <laughs> your doctor. Is he circumcised? Is he What's circumcised? Yeah, he ought to know. Uh, uh, Charlie, did you say something about it? Yes, uh, I, I saw something on YouTube showing him lying on the bed playing with himself. Oh, really? It's so already got excerpts on YouTube. It's already there, huh? Oh my God! <laughs> I'll take I'll take everybody's word for it. I really don't need to see Rudy Giuliani playing with his pecker. I don't. Yeah, but I mean, it's, I don't think yeah, and she should. does look older than fifteen. Well, oh yeah, but, but he but he's told by him. I know. She he's told by she tells him she's fifteen, and oh, he God. still does this in spite of the fact yeah. that she's fifteen. And he doesn't know any of this. No. Can they lock him up? Is he? No. No. I'm hoping well, he didn't. He didn't commit a crime. You know. But the embarrassment, how's he going to spin this? Oh, now? he's in trouble with me too, but does he care? Yeah. yeah. He may drop dead after this. Huh? We can he only, we can only, we can only hope. Okay. That's another funeral that would be nice to hear. <laughs> no, what I would like to do, I don't want to see him die. I want to see him live so he walks down the street and everybody's going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at him, you know. Uh, but Rudy, supposedly, you know, is a pawn of the Russians. He yep. is. Yeah. And, and uh, well, look, you know, I, I don't I don't even want to know what is going on with Trump. I mean, it, I, there are some things so bad there that I don't think we want to know what they are. Okay? Yeah. I mean, I think this guy has used the United States <laughs> Treasury and the United States of America as his personal bank book. Yep. Okay. He's uh, a full-on dictator. I don't nope. know that he's a dictator yet. A wannabe dictator. He wants to be yeah, dictator, he wants to be one. But he's not a dictator yet. He does have in his pocket Bill Barr, for instance, the Attorney General of the United States. So that, you know, tell Bill Barr, go after Obama. You know, go get my political enemies. I mean, he he deals, he treats the presidency like it is a dictatorship yeah. without yeah. the ability to have all the power that a mm -hmm. dictator has. I mean, I'm sure he's jealous of Putin, you know, because Putin. He said he is. Yeah, he says Putin's a great leader. He's got that country in control. You know, I mean. And also, you want to talk about somebody who uses a country for his personal pocketbook. I mean, Putin may be the richest man in the world. Really? Yeah. But we don't, we don't know for sure because we don't know the extent of his true wealth. But he made a deal with the oligarchs, 
which are the, the money guys in, England, in, uh, in Russia, that they had to give them a certain percentage, like 25% of everything they earned. Uh, otherwise, he was going to put them in jail. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, so he gets like 25% of all the oligarchs' money, and that is supposedly somewhere in the range of $75 billion. Wow. Which would probably make him the richest man on the planet, right? I think. He gave them carte blanche to buy out all the government-owned businesses, you know, the, the oil companies and the power companies, yeah. you know? And if you, did, and if you didn't abide by what he said, he'd fucking throw you in jail like he did to that one guy. Yeah. yeah. Kornikovsky or whatever. Mm -hmm. So what do, you, what do you think about the, you think, uh, so you think that the bait tonight didn't change anything? Nope. No way. Yeah. Uh, I wonder what they're saying on Drudge. You know, Drudge always does these polls. I, I can bring myself to watch, look at Drudge now because I know he's not on Trump's side. So I can. Trump is now touting this new Drudge site called Revolver News. It, is it not a, is it run by Drudge or is it a Drudge like no, it's site? Kind of, it's it's an aggregator like Drudge, but it's all just right wing Russian propaganda bullshit, you know. Yeah. Oh, uh, look, McConnell's got a health alarm, all bruised up. He's got, oh yeah, I know. Yeah, I he uh, he looks bad. His hands are all black. Wait a minute, let me look at this picture here. This is his hands. They look like they're black. I, I can show our audience if it ever comes up. Here it is. Bruce is uh, he denies like he has any healthy. health problems. Uh, it's kind of cardiac, cardi, cardial thing, or hmm? I don't know. Well, wait a minute. Let me show you, folks. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll bring no, up the. Uh, I'll bring. This is for the audience here. Look at that. There he is. Wait a minute. Close this so that the, so you get the full picture. There we okay. go. <coughs> look at that. Uh, he, he look around there on the mouth, folks. See that? Can't see it. Hmm? Yeah, well, you can't see it because it's on my. Uh, it's on the show. It's on the air. He's oh. got something on his chin. What's the then, website? Then his hands. He's got. He's got. Look, bandages on his hands. Help me. I know oh. nothing about this. Got some kind of like, like a heart thing or something, because his his hands are turning black, literally. Well, let me see here. Here you see, folks. That's what he's saying. Yeah, about that's Mitch what he's talking about. Black. <laughs> well, that may just he be like a corpse. Mitch, you know, but he does. He does not he's look. Got bandages and stuff. Yeah, he does not look well, folks. Uh, so, you know. Well, he won't be missed. Let me tell you. <laughs> he won't, he won't be missed. Okay. Uh, you know, I gotta say, you know, mm -hmm. I you know I say, I agree. Hate corrupts, but you know sometimes. Uh, you know, like when you step in dog shit, mm -hmm. you you hate the fucking person who didn't clean up the dog shit. Yeah. You know? But anyway, so, let me see. Does he have a poll? Sometimes it's just a, Sometimes you don't have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have. A, he's not running a poll tonight. Yeah. On who who do you think won tonight? You know. Um, so anyway, For, they say forty nine million people have already voted in the election. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's up big. Yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. And it's, that's very interesting, to tell you the damn truth. Um, uh, yeah. Well, well, anyway. I think that's all. I, I think that's bad. That's a bad omen for, for Trump, mm -hmm. I think. A bad omen in what respect? Yeah, I think, you know, the people that are voting early are, are you know, people mm -hmm. that are they're the same people that were marching in the streets, you know, on the Women's Day, you know. Right after he got elected, you know, well, I, it, I, I was wondering, guys, when all those people came out on the street, I was like, why the fuck didn't they all vote? You know, where were they? Yeah, well, I think this time it's going to be they say this may be the largest vote of all time. Yeah. 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 I mean, if, if 40, if 40 was it, what I say, 49, was it 49, 49 million, million already it voted already by Election Day? That's got to be many, many more than that. And and how many voted in the last election? It wasn't more than about a hundred thousand, was it? No, it was 60, 66 million for Hillary and sixty three million for Trump. Okay, so, so, so we could very well hit that amount of people that, before we yeah. even get to election day, because you know, like here in New York, uh, we haven't done it yet. You know, um, uh, we haven't had ours. Uh, 
what is it, this Saturday, I think it starts, that we start, so yeah, we're able to vote. Uh, so are you dragging your mother off to the polls to vote, or is she you doing it by mail? You know, I wanted to do it by mail, but the school's only two blocks away, so she wants to vote in person. Well. So I'm going to chance it, I think. I think it. I think if you wear, have her wear a mask through the yeah. whole thing, okay, and just to stick with the mask wearing and the social distancing, uh, you should be okay. And even if you don't social distance, the reason for the masks is if you don't social distance. So um, I think uh, and then don't let her touch your face when you're. No, when you I mean, I'm going to have to take her up there. So or or be bring weird. bring some Purell with you so you can wipe yeah, your hands. Yeah, she has everything in a handbag. So I mean. Yeah, we have extra masks. Got I think I cruise. think if you're careful, you'll be okay. You and know? it's like my like Shecky by Shecky's house. The schools across the street. My school is like a block and a half away. Mm -hmm. yeah. I could be there at home like in ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. So. And if she's good, I may buy her a cup of coffee. Then I tell her. Did way. your mother watch the debate tonight? She don't care. She just wants him dead or out of office. One of them. <laughs> the first. Whichever comes first. <laughs> Whichever comes first. He doesn't really know. You know, you're really in trouble when Which Tony's comes. mom wants you dead. I eat yeah. in Jersey. He eats in my Aunt Maria. She hates him. Hates him. She calls me. She's like, I can't take watching this. She drinks wine, my aunt in Jersey and Cresco. Mm -hmm. And calls me. She says, I, I have to drink when I watch this guy, she says, because he makes me sick. <laughs> So my mother doesn't drink. She just has tea, Alex. But she don't. She don't understand it. All she knows is he's a pig. That's all she needs to know. Wow. Yeah. She says, "Who do you think? You know, she'll say who won." She says, "I don't care. Either he's dead or out of office. One or the other." Do we have a low viewing rate tonight? I wonder why. Maybe everybody's exhausted with the debate. Watching the post game show. The post game shows. You think so? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This yeah. NBC last last debate actually. Did three hours live of post debate analysis. And I what, thought to myself, you it? could conjugate every verb in the goddamn debate in three <clears throat> hours or less. Well, I, I, you know, what they, the trouble is, we've got these news networks. And quite frankly, they're all money driven, you know? And, and all they look upon this debate as something that makes them money. Oh, it doesn't make them money for an hour and a half because they can't run commercials. Mm -hmm. But after that's over with, hey, they run their post show and their pre shows and they're all of that and the red carpet and the, you know, the, the after party, mm -hmm. whatever. And uh, they keep it going as long as they think it can go because they're getting their top rates for that. For sure. And right now, I got to tell you, television's doing very badly money-wise got to be and the way you can yeah. tell is look at the commercials they're running even the networks in prime time they're not top notch top level mm -hmm. advertisers you know you'll see a, 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 a two minute ad advertisement in prime time for a bake oven yeah. you know well how much are yeah. they paying for that yeah nothing okay you don't see coke and pepsi anymore no, and you don't see, you, you know, you don't see, uh, when you see advertising, uh, the only advertising they're getting to any appreciable extent right now is political advertising. Uh, mm -hmm. You drug, know. Drug companies. Huh? Insurance drug companies. companies. And drug companies because it's, it's Medicare time. It's yeah. the, the time mm -hmm. when you've got to sign up for your, for your Medicare uh, plan, uh, which we're involved in the middle of. So every time I hear... Uh, an ad for, you know, Medicare advan adv uh, 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 supplement plan, I immediately look and watch, and I'm sold on it. Uh, when I go to uh, YouTube, they know, because I went online, I mentioned this to Bubbles, I went online a couple of months ago, I guess, when I didn't know exactly how the whole buying Medicare supplemental worked, okay, and what each of the plans were. So I went on and looked at YouTube videos <laughs> on buying Medicare plans and how to go about it and what each of them mean and so on. I got a good education doing that. After that, every ad that played before I watched a video of course, was for one of these insurance plans. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if you ever give your phone number to one of those lead oh, brokers, God. you'll get about 150 calls for like the next three days. Yeah. 
Yeah. And you, they'll never stop calling you. Right. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I uh, the one day I had wanted to see something about how much a certain company was charging, so they wanted my email address. All of a sudden, I'm getting emails up the gazang for, for, yeah, they from, sell them. from these insurance companies. They're lead brokers. They make a fortune. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, but, I mean, it just it just made me very, you know, it, it made me realize that uh, uh, they're preying on me, basically. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway. Let's see, Peter yeah. Arno writes, on 538, the best poll aggregator and election predictor, Nate Silver, Biden has slipped almost a full point in recent days from 10.7 points ahead to 9.9. .9. And if it goes down 0.1 or 0.2 every day, scary. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. He's talking about a national, national poll, which is the popular vote. Yeah. Which yeah. it really is of no import, as we found out four years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, uh, uh, I uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about that, Peter. Uh, uh, it says, uh, let's see here, Tony. You're risking losing your meal tickets. You can't lose mom. Oh wait a minute, we just <laughs> lost Tony. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the hideous wallpaper and that chintz cart <laughs> curtain of his. Maybe we should get Trump to show up at his house and throw shit at the wall like he does all the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what the house looks like that Tony lives in, but I bet you it's the psycho house. You know, <laughs> where's the shower curtain? There it is. Yeah. Uh, right. yeah. Um, but anyway, so I, we don't we don't don't have as many people tonight. It's interesting. Usually we we go pretty high, but you know. I think everybody's getting the point of exhaustion. Absolutely. But I, I don't know. I don't know how uh, how this will play itself out. But I don't think Trump, uh, Biden's going to lose any any ground on this. Nope. Uh, I don't think he gained any. He, nope. Uh, I he's, don't. He, he, huh? He's got to win in a landslide because if it's not a landslide, Trump's going to steal it. You know, yeah. he's going to drag it into court. It's, it's got to be undeniable. Yeah. 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 And I have a funny feeling it's going to be. I just have this funny oh, feeling oh. that this is uh, all these people pre-voting are yeah. people who are for Biden. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that I don't think Trump people get that enthusiastic. You know, they love to go to. Why do they go to his rallies? They go to his rallies because they want a good laugh. It's like going to a, a comedy show. Yeah. Right. Rock concert. I bet yeah. a lot of those people just follow the rallies around too. They're not actually from yeah. the areas. They're, they, they're like Grateful Dead groupies. You well, know? Kevin, Kevin sent me a picture. You know, the audience he always has in back of him. Kevin sent me a picture, and there's a black guy. Yeah. And yeah. at every rally, he's yeah. in Same the background. Guy. Yeah. He's there. So he's a hitter. And we used to have these things called deadheads, you know, Grateful Dead fans. And they used to travel from town to town following mm -hmm. the Grateful Dead. And this is it's pretty much what you're seeing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know? Here's, uh, listen, I, you know I love Nate Silver. I brought him up here when I first started coming on the show. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a big fan of his, and I do trust a lot of the major polls, Quinnipiac and, and so on. I have my own impersonal poll, my own personal poll, which is unofficial, mm -hmm. but I, I kind of swear by, by it, and it goes as follows. Okay. I could personally name... 10 people that I know who voted for Trump in 16 that are voting for Joe in 2020. Out in the public sector, just watching TV, I could probably name 100 such people who voted for Trump and are going to vote for Joe. I know no one who's going the other way around. Well, I, I, you know, the, the point is, if you look at Joe Biden, He's not really, there's nothing really objectionable about him, okay? Uh, there's everything objectionable about Trump. And somebody said that the thing that Trump has going against him now is when he ran the last time, he was the outsider trying yes. to get in. And yes. everybody kind of, a lot of people kind of like that. Oh, hey, let the outsider go yeah. in there, you know? They always have, as I said, it's what I call the uh, Mr. Smith goes to Washington myth. 
You know, yep. oh, mm-hmm. let's let's have, uh, what a hero. Send let's send the average guy. I mean, the average guy, Donald Trump, the average guy. But let's right. send a common man to Washington and see what he does. Okay, that's over with. That doesn't exist anymore. That person doesn't exist. This is now the inside politician. Yeah. And people don't look at him in the same way, and they don't look to him as an alternative. And what they want now in all this, just this crisis that's going on with the COVID and with everything else, all they want is some semblance of peace and quiet and somebody who somehow is going to make them feel better. And Trump isn't going to make them feel better. That's not Trump's stock and trade. So what Trump has going against them is that most presidential elections are a referendum on the incumbent. It really usually is as simple as that. Yeah. It's a referendum on the incumbent and his record, period. Yeah. And under those circumstances, he's up shit's creek. You know what I didn't like, what Biden didn't take advantage of, and I don't know why he never answered a question this way. Maybe he just doesn't feel this way. Uh, when they asked him, when he kept bringing up, well, you had eight years as you know in office to change things, blah, 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 blah. My answer would have been, I don't know if you paid any attention, but I wasn't the president. I was the vice president. I could mm-hmm. only advise. Yeah. I couldn't, yeah. I, you know, I couldn't. Yeah. And I would also them. say, oh, yeah, we didn't do anything. How about we save the auto industry? How about we save the fucking country from going into a massive depression? Mm-hmm. How about we fucking yeah. created more goddamn jobs in the last three years of our administration than what you created in the first three years of your administration? Why did he, he say that? Said, and he could have said, too, we killed Bin, La- bin Laden. Which <laughs> yeah. all, uh, Several times. Yeah. Oh, conspiracy theory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We killed Bin Laden. But, you know, yeah. I mean, he, he, he's just he, he doesn't have a. Uh, the killer instinct, you know. Who, who yeah, Biden? Yeah, Biden. Yeah. yeah. Biden. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He doesn't think on his feet about. I don't know. He. he yeah. Well, I mean, openings he can uh, also. I mean, the throat. He should go it, right. For, I mean, Trump goes very personal. Biden should go right back at him, right back at his throat. Yeah. yeah the, uh, the other problem I had with Biden tonight was, and these are all going a uh, debate thing. Uh, yeah. Is that he was talking a little fast and tripping over himself to try yeah. and get an idea out. And that, because he has a stutter or had a stutter when he was younger and worked his way out of that, part of working yourself out of it is to know that you really shouldn't talk very fast, you know? Uh, and, and he was kind of letting, he, I just felt at certain points he was talking just a little too fast, you know? But, I mean, what does the debate prove? Not a damn thing. You know, who won the debate? Well, who cares? Who cares? You know, uh, we care about the American people winning. Okay. And, and, and I think, I just think they've had the novelty of a Trump. They're tired of it. They, they've gone into Trump fatigue. Yeah. And I think that's, what's not going to get him elected again. And people will then look at Biden and go, Hey, he's a nice, nice enough guy. His name is Joe. I mean, come on, what's better than a good old Joe, right? And uh, that he, will, uh, he won't ruin the country. He won't uh, make it terrible. So let's, uh, let's give him a shot. You know, couldn't hurt. That couldn't hurt. They felt with Trump, oh, couldn't hurt. I got news for you. Yeah. Four more years of that, folks, and we're, oh, yeah. there, we're isn't a, there isn't a United yeah. States of America any longer. It's going to be fucking crazy if he loses... And then what's going to happen before the inauguration? Can you imagine the crazy ass shit he's going to be doing? The yeah. only hope that I would have is, let's say he won, is that he won, but we but we got the Senate and the Congress. Yeah. Then he can't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, then he's, well, I wouldn't he's, be surprised though. Huh? I, I don't know. I, I he'd go nuts. I mean, yeah. four more years of this nutcase. There's no telling what that motherfucker will do. Well, I, you know, I'm just hoping get rid of Barr hmm? and get somebody in there. Well, Barr, Barr, lock up. Barr's gone. I mean, if he be, if, yeah. if Biden yeah. becomes president, Barr, I, there's a whole bunch of people that'll be cleaned out. I know who he'd like to probably make um, um, the attorney general, but he won't take the job. And that's so, Cuomo. Cuomo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or. Uh, 
Susan I, I just, Rice yeah. for Secretary of State. Yeah, because uh, 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 Cuomo was Attorney General of the State of New York at one point. Yeah. You know, you know um, it might be a uh, good Attorney General would be, uh, what's his name, the guy from down in L.A., um, the dude that's got a big bug up Trump's ass. What's his name? Oh, wow. Um, no, 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 no. Was the, the, was the, uh, the guy that was the leader, leader, lead prosecutor in the impeachment. Oh, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. well, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, my mind's a blank called. right now, but I'm an oh. old man. I don't remember things easily. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the guy that he's, he, guy that Trump's always calling him pencil neck. Yeah, I noticed tonight that uh, Melania was wearing. Uh, Malaria was wearing a uh, a face mask. Yeah. Uh, you know. Hypocrites. I don't know if anybody else next to her was, but, you know, she's supposedly still sick, actually. She's been coughing and <laughs> still has, you know. But, um, uh, and things are getting worse around the country. I oh, mean, yeah, totally. this, this, mm -hmm. this, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he's talking about what right we, around what, the corner. Herd, herd, herd mentality. Yeah, Jeff's got his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, I'll give you guys my my uh, update mm -hmm. on my uh, old, my uh, oldest son. Mm -hmm. He, uh, two guys in his office are sick now. Oh, boy. And my son is, uh, he was working at the office now he's gonna stay at home for two weeks well i got i have the cuomo where is it here the latest cuomo uh thing and the positivity positivity rate in the micro cluster focus areas was 3.2 percent okay statewide positively rate positivity rate <laughs> positivity rate excluding those areas in other words the hot zone was a 0.96%. That's good, because it's below 1%. Mm -hmm. But there were a total of 986 total hospitalizations. Now, we've gone as low as like into the 400s in the last many months, in the last month or so. So that's not good. Uh, of the 135,341 tests that we did yesterday, yesterday, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, 1,628 were reported, or 1.2 percent were positive. So the overall for the state was 1.2. Without the hot zones, it was a, a 0 0.96. We lost. This is the highest I can remember it in three or four months. We lost 15 New Yorkers to virus. The virus yesterday. So mm -hmm. even here, it's not looking great. You know, I mean, it is looking great here. I mean, you compare that to uh, 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 Nevada. You have in Nevada right now 59% infection rate. Wow. 59%. Now, you put that against our 1.2 with all the stuff taken into consideration. We're doing okay. Uh, I think we're ahead of Connecticut now. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, like, I think the worst is North Dakota. No. Yeah. no, the worst is no, the worst is Nevada. The worst That's is right. Nevada. No. Uh, and uh, North Dakota's big problem is they don't have any resources. Yeah, and right. then you know, fifteen people die in fifteen people die of COVID in North Dakota and there are no people living in North Dakota anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. What what is Combined it? Combined Dakotas. Who is it that keeps bringing it up? Maybe it's Bill Maher or whatever that he doesn't understand why there's a North Dakota and a right. South Dakota. Just combine them. If you put the two Dakotas yeah. together, their total population won't amount to much of anything, right? Right. And yet, nope. between them, they've got four senators and how many congressmen? Right. As many senators as New York and New Jersey combined. Yeah, exactly. New exactly. York and California combined. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Uh, so, I mean, this is not right. There is something not right here. They should split California into north and south and give us two, two more senators. Okay. Yeah. Well, I uh, for years, as I was growing up, it always came up about uh, making uh, Northern California the 51st state. Yeah. Uh, that they felt that Southern California and Northern California didn't have much in common. 
Yeah. And that dude, it, it, and plus we had all the power up in California, up in Northern California, because they got all their water from us, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, it never happened. They never, it never did the two different states. But that could be split up into two states, and the two halves are so different from one another. Yeah. That uh, you know that there that you could do it and nobody would be bothered by it. So. Before the show is over, let's review, so I'm sure I understand this. The President of the United States gets impeached mm -hmm. for trying to elicit a foreign government to uh, dig up dirt on a political opponent. Yeah. He gets uh, impeached in the House. He gets passed by in the Senate by a few votes. Right. And now he's eliciting help from a foreign government to besmirch Joe Biden in broad daylight. Yep. Right. Okay. I just wanted to be sure I understood. That. I, I think you have that one correct. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Good job. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and it's it's in the Ukraine, by the way, where we were. They were trying to get the Ukraine. Remember, they were trying to get the Ukrainian Prime Minister yeah. to uh, get the goods on Joe Biden. Uh, so the, uh, otherwise they weren't going to send them relief money or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And yeah. finally they said, we can't because we don't have anything against Joe Biden. Right. And uh, there was enough hue and cry about it that, that Trump dropped the whole idea. But I mean, that was, that was, that was ske pretty skeezy. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, do we live in a democracy still? I don't know close i well i always felt we lived in the illusion of a democracy because really i mean you would say if you said to a black person in the south years they go do we live in a democracy they would tell you well i don't know i don't get to vote yeah. you know they suppress my vote so i mean we've always lived in kind of an illusionary democracy only some people have a democracy others don't yeah. um i know charlie just bobs his head up and down agreeing with me, yeah. Uh, which uh, you you can't see that on the uh, on the audio portion of the show, mm. but he's very active with the show. Is concerned by nodding his head. Uh, but uh, do, you, do you think do you think Biden's going to win this one? Do you think we we got a good I hope so. Huh? God, I'm hoping I so. Hope so. I don't know what I'm going to do yeah. if he if he loses. I just don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what. MSNBC and Fox are going to talk about when Joe takes office because it's going to turn boring in a hurry. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, oh, when they don't have Trump to kick around anymore. Yeah, no, really. You know, he's a source of of you know great, great nudes coverage, jokes. Comedians well, uh, are going to you know going to go my, belly my, up. My cause... friend, my friend Will Durst, who had a stroke and is in a hospital and is a political comedian. <laughs> said of all times for me to get a stroke yeah right you know uh as he laid there in the bed with a stroke and i'm talking to him he goes i just you know i said well listen don't worry don't worry about it because even if you didn't have the stroke you wouldn't be working because there's COVID out there no clubs are open so yeah. Plus, you, can't, you can't write shit funnier than this no right you can't make this crap up yeah hey listen this has been a delightful evening spent with uh, good friends that's what I like about it. You know, I, many times I say I don't I don't have any best friends except for my friend Shecky. But, you know, you guys have all kind of become best friends just by attrition. Uh, oh, good friends. <laughs> you know, I really, I really, and I thank you for coming to talk to me every night and hang out with me and have this little party. Robert Natali, thank you. Charlie, mm -hmm. always, as always, thank you. Jeff, always, thank you. John Larkin, great. And Tony, of course, you know, you and your wallpaper and your chintz <laughs> curtains. Yeah, get I out just, of here. Give me, give me. Okay, <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Everybody wave goodbye, and I will wave goodbye. You know who wasn't here tonight? Brian wasn't here tonight. Well, probably tomorrow night. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Uh, that's our, uh, our citizen panel for tonight, uh, and that's our program for tonight. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection. He'll be here, and it'll be uh, you, they do it on Skype at uh, gabnet.net is the is the address you can use. Okay, all right, it's that simple. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow night, uh, ten thirty, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, 
As always, if you see her, tell her I love her, and please be safe out there and wear a goddamn mask! <laughs>